You could be helping the souls in purgatory in tremendous ways through the smallest things which you already do throughout your entire way through the power of indulgenced prayers. Indulgences are one of the most misunderstood teachings of the Catholic Church along with purgatory. They were one of the central themes in the Protestant Reformation and St. Faustina in the Diary of Divine Mercy reveals to us their immense power echoed by Jesus himself. If you would like to support this channel in any way, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee. Let's jump right in. Oh Jesus, I understand that your mercy is beyond all imagining, and therefore I ask you to make my heart so big that there will be room in it for the needs of all the souls living on the face of the earth. Oh Jesus, my love extends beyond the world to the souls suffering in purgatory, and I want to exercise mercy toward them by means of indulgenced prayers. God's mercy is unfathomable and inexhaustible, just as God himself is unfathomable. Even if I were to use the strongest words that are to express this mercy of God, all this would be nothing in comparison with what it is in reality. O Jesus, make my heart sensible to all the sufferings of my neighbor, whether of body or of soul. O my Jesus, I know that you act toward us as we act toward our neighbor. That phrase, indulgenced prayers, was absolutely anointed to me when I was praying with it the other day. And I asked myself, what is she talking about? What indulgence prayers does she mean in this case? When you take a look at the manual of indulgences, even though it has been updated, it is rich and profound. And I would say even overwhelming to where you could do tens and 15 or 20 videos just talking about all the things that it unpacks. Now, basically, I always like to use the metaphor of indulgences being like scholarships. They work in exactly the same way. And we have two types, plenary and partial, just like we have full and partial scholarships. Now, when it comes to plenary, there are a number of different ones that we can do. The four principal ones that you and I should be concerned about are what I would like to call the 30-minute prayers. And these are ones that most of us could do every day along that we have certain conditions, being completely detached from sin, which is much more difficult than you would imagine. And I've talked about that in other videos. Then having gone to confession, having received communion, and then praying prayers for the Pope, which can be of your choosing. For instance, I have suggested the St. Michael prayer and the Eternal Father prayer if you have a devotion to the souls in purgatory, which presumably you do if you're watching this video. So those four prayers, those four 30-minute prayers are... 30 minutes in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, 30 minutes reading scripture, praying the stations of the cross, but they have to be properly erected, such as in a church, and you're walking from one to another, and you're praying with it meditation, such as the ones from St. Alphonsus Liguori, and then the last one, praying the rosary, but praying in a group. For instance, my rosary that we do every night at 9 p.m., Central Standard Time, if you want to join, join tonight. What I would suggest to you is that you include one of these four in your daily spiritual life. That way you know that you are covering that plenary indulgence. But I want to focus on the partial ones, because that's really what I think St. Faustina means when she talks about these indulgence prayers. She's talking about these small little prayers that she weaves in and out of her day in everything that she does. And that's what we can do because there's no limit to them. While we can only have one plenary, we could do theoretically thousands upon thousands of indulgence prayers in a day. Now, when you look at the manual of indulgences, there's way too many partial indulgence prayers. There's a whole section that tells you all the different prayers. It gives you examples. There's too many for me to talk about. I usually like to go to some of the simple ones, but let me just mention some out loud. For instance, if you do some sort of reverence to a blessed object, such as kissing a blessed statue, kissing a blessed crucifix, touching and saying a prayer and kissing your miraculous medal, or your scapular, it says there that any reverence shown to a blessed item can gain for you a partial indulgence. You can do this many, many, many times a day. Some other prayers that are partial indulgences would be things like the Memorare, 
the Anima Christi, or my favorite because of its simplicity and because we learned it in our childhood, the Guardian Angel Prayer. That's something that you can pray hundreds of times a day. So what I would suggest to you is to go to that manual of indulgences and look up indulgence prayers, partial indulgence prayers, and make a list of four to five of them that seem to fit your spirituality, ones that you like. There's a lot. There there are some that are very long. These include litanies. These include prayers from the Eastern Catholic Church. There are way too many to pick from. Pick your favorite four or five and pray these throughout the day. Weave them in as you're driving, as you're sitting, as you're standing, as you're sleeping, everywhere. And in this way, your entire day could be a way of paying off the debt of the souls in purgatory, and you become this incredibly effective instrument in delivering them. July 9th, 1937. This evening, one of the deceased sisters came and asked me for one day of fasting and to offer all of my spiritual exercises on that day for her. I answered that I would. From early morning on the following day, I offered everything for her intention. During Holy Mass, I had a brief experience of her torment. I experienced such intense hunger for God that I seemed to be dying of the desire to become united with Him. This lasted only a short while but I understood what the longing of the souls in purgatory was like. The second and the third paragraphs that I read to you are really interconnected. Now, I don't know if you remember, but maybe I'll post that video right here. When I asked God to give me an experience of purgatory, remember what happened? I got in a mountain biking accident. I nearly, well, I broke my neck. I became nearly paralyzed. I was paralyzed actually for about 30 minutes. I would not suggest to you to do that. Please don't do that. Don't ask for what I did. I'm glad God gave me the experience, but I really would not want to wish that even on my worst enemy. But I would suggest to you to ask for what St. Faustina received. She received this inner experience of the intense hunger for God that the souls in purgatory had. She felt like she was dying. Now, that's not that's also not going to be a pleasant experience. But that's something that you could survive. It won't send you to the hospital. It might only be five minutes. And it will connect with what Jesus says in the eighth day of the Divine Mercy Novena. Now, I'm releasing these videos before the Divine Mercy Novena begins. So if you're watching it, then then perhaps we should all ask for this grace. Why? Because when we've experienced the pain of another person, it makes us so much more zealous so much more intense in our wanting to relieve their suffering. Eighth day. Today, bring to me the souls who are in the prison of purgatory and immerse them in the abyss of my mercy. Let the torrents of my blood cool down their scorching flames. All these souls are greatly loved by me. They are making retribution to my justice. It is in your power to bring them relief. Draw all the indulgences from the treasury of my church and offer them on their behalf. Oh, if you only knew the torments they suffer, you would continually offer for them the alms of the Spirit and pay off their debt to my justice. That paragraph of the eighth day in the novena is so packed that I could do an entire video or even video series on that. There is so much there. First of all, notice what Jesus calls purgatory. He calls it the prison of purgatory. Prison is its technical name. That's what it is. Purgatory is what happens. Purgation. Now, we as Catholics call it purgatory from our tradition, but scripturally speaking, it's prison. Jesus says that word at least twice, if not three times in these scriptures right here. And when you read those scriptures, it doesn't make sense to interpret it in a material way. It makes sense to interpret it in a spiritual way. For instance, he says, so will my heavenly father do to you unless you forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Now, our heavenly father isn't going to put us in a prison, but he could put us in purgatory. So we Catholics are literally interpreting what Jesus is saying there. 
And so Protestants will always say, well, where is purgatory in the Bible? Purgatory, the word is not in the Bible, but the word prison is. And that's what Jesus is talking about. So look up those scriptures and bring that to your brothers and sisters who are Protestant. Another thing that Jesus reveals in that paragraph is just how much he loves the souls in purgatory. He says they are greatly loved by Jesus. Now, we should help the souls in purgatory because it's the right thing to do. We should help them because when we help them, when we deliver them, different saints will say, it's like we're delivering Jesus himself. He says, you did it to me, as as was the famous phrase used a lot by Mother Teresa, taking it from the last judgment scene of Matthew 25. But if that's not enough to convince you, Jesus says they are greatly loved by him. So if we help those that he greatly loves, how is not how is that not the most amazing thing ever? Then the next sentence that always fills me with so much zeal and it brings chills to my soul is where Jesus says, it is in your power to bring them relief. We live in this world where people are power hungry. They are seeking this presidency or they want to be on some pastoral council at the church or they want to be in charge. They want to be in front of everyone. They want power. Our secular world wants power and they want power through money, through fame, through all these different things. And we already have it. You already have power right here. Did you know that you have more power right here than in many atomic bombs? Forget all that silly stuff out in the world. Who cares about being president or leader of this? Forget all those things. They're nothing. And they really probably don't really impact people. You're probably hurting people. If you want real power to impact change, pray for the souls in purgatory. You have more power in your prayer for the souls in purgatory than you can possibly imagine. So every time in your life that you're ignored, that people don't think about your opinions or that you're just sort of pushed to the side and you you feel powerless, think to yourself, I'm going to say an indulgence prayer for the souls in purgatory and I will regain more power than I could possibly want. That last sentence in that paragraph where he speaks about obtaining for them the alms of the spirit That is one of my favorite phrases of the Diary of Divine Mercy. Now, what are alms? Alms are food and water and and donations or money that we give to the poor. But alms of the, the Spirit is, now we're talking about the spiritual realm, these things that we do to relieve the thirst, the hunger, the nakedness, the imprisonment, the, the sickness, the being a stranger, these works of mercy, but spiritual works of mercy. Just prior in that paragraph, he talks about, oh, if you only knew the torments that they suffer. It's as if Jesus is inviting us. Perhaps you should ask me for the grace to experience in your heart the hunger that they feel so that you will then want to continually offer these alms of the Spirit. Wouldn't it be amazing if that's what we would be all about, that we would be the type of person that we become masters of offering alms of the Spirit for the souls in purgatory. There is no greater calling. When Sister Dominic died at about one o'clock in the night, she came to me and gave me to know that she was dead. I prayed fervently for her. In the morning, the sisters told me that she was no longer alive, and I replied that I knew because she had visited me. The Sister Infirmarian asked me to help dress her And then when I was alone with her, the Lord gave me to know that she was still suffering in purgatory. I redoubled my prayers for her. However, despite the zeal with which I always pray for our deceased sisters, I got mixed up as regards the days, and instead of offering three days of prayer as a rule directs us to, by mistake I offered only two days. On the fourth day, she gave me to know that I still owed her prayers and that she was in need of them. Immediately, I formed the intention of offering the whole day for her, and not just that day, but much more, as love of neighbor dictated to me. And finally, in that last paragraph, we hear this invitation for us to finish what we say we're supposed to do. We forget, but the souls in purgatory do not 
because God does not forget. And so what he demands of a soul, whatever is the debt that they owe, God does not forget. What can we do? Two thoughts here. We can always ask the souls in purgatory to remind us of any promises that we owe to them or of anything else that they need. Secondly, we can beg and ask our guardian angels to remind us. One kind of golden thread that you see in these visions of purgatory that St. Faustina has is her guardian angel is present. It is he who takes her into purgatory. And when you look at other writings of people that have been taken into purgatory, it's often their guardian angels that have done so. So if you want to go visit purgatory, your guardian angel has an incredibly crucial role in this. And we often over Look at, ask and beg your guardian angel to intercede for you, to teach you interiorly how to do that better, how to remember, how to be more inspired, to be, to be more fervent about it, and even if God wills, to take you into purgatory himself.